You know, nowadays, we're all very lucky. We all have things like respect, equality, loyalty. It wasn't like that in the old days. It's been a long struggle for women across, across the world. And it wasn't that long ago that women who wanted to publish stories, well, they often had to invent a male's name in order to, well, in order to publish anything. And I'm not just talking about the Jane Austen era. Oh, no, 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 no. J.K. Rowling, for example, before we became, we knew her as J.K. Rowling, there's a story of a certain book called Casual Vacancies that was written by a male author. You can see where I'm going here, can't you? Of course, it was J.K. Rowling having to pretend to be a man. And she wasn't the only one. There's many Disney characters as well who have had to dress up as men in order to, well, gain some respect. Ariel has always been very rebellious throughout the, throughout the years and would probably, I believe, be the last person I would ever imagine to have to disguise herself. Other than disguise herself as a human, yeah, okay, I kind of talked myself out of that argument there. The point is, I would never imagine her dressing up as a man in order to prove anything. But even under the sea, unfortunately, there is boundaries. This story is a Little Mermaid story and it's called Ariel and the Seahorse Race. Ariel! King Triton's voice thundered. Why would you want to sign up for the annual seahorse race? No mermaid has ever competed in it. It's for mermen only. Ariel raised her chin defiantly. Mermaids ride seahorses too, Daddy, she said. And Stormy may be small, but he's fast. No, Ariel, I forbid you to enter the race, he said. It's too dangerous. Ariel moped around the race course all week long. Her best friend Flounder tried to cheer her up, but it was no use. Then Ariel had an idea. That's it! she cried. I'll pretend to be a merman. Ariel swam around the palace looking for a racing u u uniform and helmet. On the morning of the competition, Ariel hid with Stormy near the starting line, her tail swishing back and forth nervously. When everyone was in, was in position, a spark shot out of the tip of King Triton's trident. The race was on. The racers steered their their seahorses through the water at breakneck speed. When they reached the coral reef, many of the more powerful seahorses could not fit through and had to swim round, but Stormy was small and Ariel was brave. They zipped in and out of the spiky coral. It was not long before they were in the lead. Stormy whipped round the next turn, but this time he was going too fast. Ariel's helmet hit the coral and popped off. Her long red hair steam streamed out behind her. The whole kingdom could see them now. The crowd gasped as they recognised King Triton's daughter. Ariel and Stormy crossed the finish line first. Ariel smiled broadly and waved. Then she caught sight of her father. He looked angry. Ariel nervously steered Stormy towards the royal box. There stood King Triton holding the gleaming trophy. Daddy, I... Ariel began, but she didn't finish, before King Triton hugged her tightly. Oh, Ariel, I'm sorry, he said. I had forgotten how much fun racing could be. Will you forgive me? Ariel nodded. Then proudly, King Triton handed his daughter, the first mermaid ever to win the annual seahorse race, her trophy. In one way, Ariel did quite an achievement, a very small one, but small indeed. By competing in the race, she was able to prove that mermaids are just as good at racing as mermen. And in history, there have been many women who have proved that point, and better. People who have ridden 
boat races, people who have ridden horses, young women who have proven themselves equal, if not better, than the men. It has taken a while, but women have succeeded. But that doesn't mean that King Triton was in the wrong either. He is a father. And there's an old saying, fathers are always overprotective of their daughters. And King Triton is an example of a father who is very protective of his daughter. With probably very good reason as well. Still, I wonder if you guys can help me name many women who have done the first greatest deed in the world. It could be anything. First female swimmer, first racer, first commander. Perhaps there are more Jane, C Jane Seymour's out there than we know. I don't know, to be honest. I'm not even sure what the future holds for me. But I know one day I'll find out. After all, I live in a world where there is no boundary to the future, save one. And that's you. And me. What is inside of me determines what my future is. Just as what's inside of all of you determines what you can do. I better go. I can hear dinner. Dinner steaming in the oven. Hope you'll join me again tomorrow for another story. And I'll see you again real soon. Bye for now.